Um, okay, so my name is Shelly Sunberg. I am children's pastor at Gateway Fellowship in Paulsbo, Washington. No, it is not Paulsbo, it is Paulsbo. Um, I watched a video documentary of the history of Paulsbo, and somebody didn't put uh, make the, the tail on the A correct, and when they turned it in to be a city, they misspelled it. So P O U L S B O. So, um, been in Paulsbo for a few years, been a children's pastor since 2005. So, um, I was informed last year I was no longer a newbie children's pastor, and that scared me half to death. So, i um, been doing it for a few years here. And so today, we are talking about creative teaching, because I know from time to time we kind of get stuck in the same rut. We feel like our creative juices have completely lapsed. So today we're going to go through some kind of strategies of why we do creative teaching and also how to think about how we teach kids so that really um, it'll be easier for us to come up with creative ideas that actually end up connecting with the children, something that they'll actually retain, something that they go home. I mean, honestly, the goals they go home and tell their parents, oh my goodness. We talked about this. Side note, kids and awesome Bible stories always work. Like, tell a story of Ehud and how he stabs the king and the sword gets stuck in his belly fat. You don't need to do much with that. That's, that's like Bible gold right there. So. <laughs> and we followed it up with JL stabbing Sisera. Yeah. I mean, it was, it was a great two weeks in kids' church. But anyway, so, um, all right, so... Have you guys ever felt that um, your ideas for where you're teaching, whether you're teaching preschool class, nursery class, elementary class, uh, girls ministry, rangers, whatever, that your lessons are getting dry? Ever felt that you're just like, it's getting dry? I feel like that quite often. Um, and so um, it's, it's important for us to kind of keep things fresh, kind of challenge ourselves to rethink Put people on our team who are also creative. Bounce ideas off of people. So um, here's the first thing that we're going to talk about right at the top um, of your page right here. Here's a quote. I don't remember where it came from, but I just love it. It's about creative teaching. So it, it's here so that you and your team can laser focus your gifts, experiences, and abilities to create the most phenomenal lesson possible each week. So let me say that again, because I know you can't see the screen over here. Um, so creative teaching, it's great because you and your team can laser focus <coughs> your gifts, experiences, and abilities to create the most phenomenal lesson possible each week. And in order to creatively teach, you have to um, completely break out of, it. so there's a blank right there, break out of your comfort zone. So in or, second point, in order to creatively teach, you have to break out of your comfort zone. You have to try things that might make you look weird. Um, I've told people a lot that if they ever came into kids' church, I would be almost slightly embarrassed <laughs> um, if they'd never seen me teach before because my animation level is even higher than what I'm doing right now and I feel like I'm being slightly animated, but it's like 10 times this when I'm with kids. It's like ultra dramatic and I would almost be embarrassed if like a friend that's never seen me teach came in because there's no comfort zone <laughs> when I'm on stage with the kids, I'm teaching a group of kids. It's all about them and not saving face for me. So the first thing about creative teaching, I'd say break out of your comfort zone. So um, most of you, if you have not yet, grabbed an item from my box of wonders. We're going to start out breaking um, our comfort zone. And I want you to get together with maybe three or four people just around you. And I want you to use that item to come up with an object lesson. What an object lesson is, is taking something that's normal around the house and then uh, relating it to a biblical truth. An example, let's say that, um, let's see, we're, I'm gonna grab one in here just to kind of show you. Okay, so we're going to grab this, okay? So this is a spray bottle right here. So I might be able to say that uh, the Holy Spirit, um, you know, brings us comfort. And when the Holy Spirit brings us comfort, you know, let's say there's water in here. 
It was like special effects. <laughs> um, and it covers you and it comforts you. So it just took the lesson up a notch by taking some simple biblical fact and connecting it to an everyday object that the kids might see. So here's what I want you to do. Just get into groups of three or four people. Think about your object. I'm giving you guys um, about two minutes to look at your item. I know, and it's going to stretch you. Don't be embarrassed. Everybody's in the same boat. I just did it, and mine was ridiculous, let's be honest. So, um, but I want you to... <laughs> Don't nod, Sarah. Okay. <laughs> um, but I want you guys to just look at the item that you grabbed. If you don't have an item, come up here and grab one. Two minutes to come up with something. And then within your groups of, in three and four, I'll give you guys the signal. And you guys are going to share your object lesson. Please keep it to like 30 seconds, like one sentence, two sentences. Okay? You don't need to preach. Just give just the, the, the main points. Ready? Go. Go for it. Mine's easy. Go. You, you go. So... You can do Where's yours? You just grab one. I'll pick one for you. Here. Oh, you can do this one. That was an easy one. That was easy. I got like five steps right now. <laughs> so when we're in our groups, are we each supposed to show, uh, say, a little bit about our object? We're just showing what we're doing. Do you got no? So what you're going to do in your group is you're just going to present your object lesson to you. There's, there's gun getting it. Oh, Shelly. Like but it could be whatever you want it to be. Shelly, what did you use this last? I threw things at children. <laughs> <laughs> is it a little smashed? It's well used. <laughs> oh, is there stuff on it? <laughs> um, so I've used a single object lesson with this is where you put soap on your finger and you put this in water oh, and you lame. Like, that's a good one. <laughs> and it's like uh, it dissipates it dissipates and goes away. On the pepper. So you have water and then pepper on it and yeah. soap and it goes away. Yeah. And it goes yeah. and it goes away from it. Now what's your biblical lesson? When you invite Jesus into your heart into your life, no say heart, that will kill you. Um, then that's how your action lessons in for you. Boom! I got that. <laughs> Go for it. That's on tape, isn't it? Yeah. Dang it! They can edit it. Okay, um. Oh dear. I'm not a creative person, this is why I came to this class. It helps you see things underwater see things so clearly. See, life well, that's kind of what I was thinking about. When life kind of gets crazy and things get out of control, God gives you the tools there you and go. the ability to see things. All right, you guys have one minute and left you to share your object lesson with people in your group. One minute Stay left alive. to finish up. No. If yeah. someone in your group had an amazing <laughs> one, so tell me afterward. Yeah. There was a snorkel. Because I'll make them so share it. <laughs> okay. Sorry. Go for it. Um. Uh, she said he has the whole world in his hands. That's, ooh, or missions okay. or something. Yeah. I'm thinking along the lines of missions. So I just. Yeah. Sure. <laughs> when stuff hits you in the face and they, it just sticks. <laughs> Can you do something about that? You need to protect yourself so that when Satan throws his body guards at you or slime. That's the shield of salvation. That's not that face mask. Use it as a shield. This is that it's clear. <laughs> what else can you do with cover? All right, let's get it together. Um, Raise your hand if you think somebody in your group or like you had an awesome are, one. Like that was pretty great. All right, All right. Like, in the back right there. Like okay, what was yours? Pepper tastes good. Yes, <laughs> she got the bug. I'm so excited. So we have in our three our three person group is the fly. Uh, when I think of flies, I think of dead things because flies like to swarm dead things. And I think of poop, but they also don't just go to the poop and the dead things. They will right. also land on good things. Oh, and right. So that's mm. so the flies. We is sort of the fly can be seen as the enemy. They go and do all this, do all the bad, and then they'll kind of come to try to contaminate the good because when flies oh. land on things, they puke whatever in the world.
know that they have, so mm. we kind of want to guard ourselves from flies. That was very kid friendly. That was good. <laughs> I saw where you were going, and I was like, ooh, gross. Oh. Oh. <laughs> one more. Who, who, is there someone else who has a good one? Low self esteem. Come on. <laughs> All right, we'll move on. Um, so that was just an activity to get us warmed up, get you out of your comfort zone. Uh, try to switch your brain into that creative mode of thinking through how we can use everyday items. We don't have to be at a church that has a big budget because most of us are not at a church with big, big budgets. And some of churches that are larger, I'm at a larger church, about 1,200 people. I still don't have a a high children's ministry budget, so a uh, dollar store is like my store, yeah. and, that's, and so I will walk through and find object lesson after object lesson or things that will help enhance my lesson. So now that we're getting going on that, we're going to talk about the four different types of learners. Did you know that in your classroom, mm -hmm. there are four different types of learners sitting amongst your whole entire class? So pe that means that the kids are receiving and understanding the message in different ways. The way that they're going to retain it best is through different mediums, different ways that we do things. So the first one, you have your little chart here. Um, we have visual, we have auditory, tactile, and kinesthetic. Oh, and they're falling off the screen. Very nice. All right. So visual, <laughs> see is the key word. See. They need to see the lesson. That's why an object lesson for those who are visual learners, they need to be able to see See what you're talking about. That could be as simple as putting up a picture up on the screen. That could be acting it out and then seeing the, the point, the lesson being acted out. So make sure in your lesson that something having to do with the main point allows them to see something. Next, auditory, they need to discuss the topic. Not only do they need to hear it, but they need to have a chance to say it or to discuss what's going on. So if you're the only one teaching in your class and you never ask questions and you never give them time to discuss and say, what do you guys think about this? Turn to your neighbor and tell me what you think would have happened. Uh, or, or tell me what you think of, you know, the fly landing on the poo and then landing on your meal, you know, and let them discuss it then um, that's the way that they learn best is through discussion and talking it through. So tactile, they have to touch it. Kind of know that one. Some kids just have to hold something in their hand. Some kids have to try it on their own. So if you're doing a science experiment up on stage, it might be when they get to small group time or later in the lesson, letting them do a miniature version of this same experiment that you did, boom, you're going to hit the tactile people. Letting them hold on to something that you're talking about. We're going to go over this a little bit later. Oh, you're just going to minister to their hearts. They're going to be able to take that lesson, and they're going to be able to remember more of it. They're going to be able to grab onto more of it because you let them touch something. The last one is kinesthetic. What is kinesthetic? Motion. Movement. Motion. Yeah. Motion. Oh, you know those kids. You know, during worship, they're like, ba da 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 I mean, they got to move, okay? And so the kinesthetic learners, they need, they need to, the word is, experience the lesson. So they're a part of a skit. Uh, they're a part of the learning process. Um, another word, uh, experience, uh, with kinesthetic learners is if they get to teach it as well. So if they break into small groups and get to retell the lesson, they get to experience being a part of that story, being a part of that lesson. So the point underneath there, um, it's important for us to understand how kids learn so that we can effectively reach kids, here's the blank, in a way that connects with them best. Let me say it again. It's important for us to understand how kids learn so that we can effect effectively uh, reach each kid in a way that connects with them best. Next point, we don't teach creatively to simply entertain a group of kids. If that's why you're doing it, you're going to fail miserably every time. Why are we doing it? Yeah. <laughs> it was my item. It was your <laughs> item. Tactile. Tactile. <laughs> Kinesthetic, maybe. Okay. <laughs> so we are methodically planning to, here's the blank, reach kids and help them keep centered in God's truth. 
We're not just trying to entertain them. We want each individual kid to have an opportunity to experience the lesson in a way that they will connect with, so they will connect it, we'll be able to reach them, and then they can keep the lesson. Why would I want to spend all my time, you know, making a lesson and doing it if the kids are not even going to keep that lesson? If they're not even going to retain it or have an opportunity to even retain it? So while we're listening... Uh, while we're thinking through our lessons, it's really important to think, do I, do I cover each of these four learning areas? Mm. And you can think about it in your, let's maybe say you're doing the object lesson that week or you're doing the Bible story. You can even think of it just in the one element, <laughs> am I reaching all four? Or in the larger scale of you're gathering with the kids, then are, am I making sure that all four types of learning are connecting with that main point? So a child's retainability, how people retain best. Do you have a chart on the back? You might be a little shocked by this if you haven't uh, done this before. I'm not even going to do it on the screen here. We're just going to do it. Okay, here we go. 10%, okay, child's retainability. They'll remember 10% of what they read. 10%, people in general. If you read something, you'll remember 10% of that information. Next, 20% of what they hear. So besides reading, if you're telling it and they're listening, They'll, re they'll remember 20% uh, of that lesson. 30% of what they see. So in general, if you put something up on the stage, you're, you know, and you're showing a picture of it, they'll remember 30% of what they've seen or a skit that they've seen. Now this is where it kind of breaks up. 50% of what they are hearing and seeing. So if you're telling a story while somebody's acting it out, they're going to retain 50% of what you have said. 70% of what they discuss. This is in general. So if you um, do a skit and you do the lesson and you're doing a good job doing the Bible story and then you break into small groups or let them turn to their neighbor and discuss it, they're going to represent 70%. Now here's where we want to get to. 90%, the last one. 90% of what they teach. <laughs> Teaching. Kids go home and they teach the lesson to their parents. What'd you learn today? Oh, well, we talked about this, and then we learned about how, like, Satan can come in, and, like, um, he lands on poo, and then he lands on our food. <laughs> It was so great. And they're like, well, tell me more about it. Well, actually, it means that he tries to contaminate our lives. So, like, we have to put on the full armor of God so that we can protect ourselves from um, Satan's attacks. They just got 90% of what you said. <laughs> because they went home and they were able to teach that. So this would be the example of 90% retention of the lesson. It also allows the kinesthetic learner to connect with the lesson. So like I, just to help the parents in that discussion, I send take home little sheets for them to do during the week so that the parents can sit there and go, hey, so uh, you had a memory verse and you were talking about Ehud and tell me about Ehud and they're like, mom, you need to know about Ehud. He's awesome, right? <laughs> Alyssa loves Ehud. <laughs> Favorite, her all-time favorite. Um, and, and so uh, once you get the kids to the point that they can teach the lesson, you've got them. So that's your goal, is to get them to the point that they're wanting to tell people about this. You know that their retention level is at 90%, and that is going to be our goal, is the 90%. All right. Um, so, <clears throat> all right. Turn to your quarter sheet. Here's what I'd like you to do, kind of in your groups here. Kind of discuss, um, do you know the attention span of children? I know there's a 30-year-old. I'm 30 years old. I'm still a child. It's fine. So do you know the attention span of children? This is not just attention span as long as how long can they sit there, because I've seen kids be able to sit there an hour, but maximum learning. So what's their maximum learning time attention span? So you have to do your guesstimates. I will give you guys one minute to go through and to put down what you guys think that their attention, the, the cap of their maximum learning attention span is. I said 30 seconds. I, I agree with that. Or 15. <laughs> A five-year-old? I said two, yeah. Maybe even less. An eight-year-old? Two minutes. I said three, yeah. 
Ten year old, maybe five. Or, yeah, I just, I just did two, three, four. I don't know. Fourteen year old. I said eight. I don't know. What do you think? That's pretty reasonable. What? Maybe more than five, but less than ten. Eight. I mean, my intention is five minutes. You either you get or you don't in the first five minutes. That's true. That's why I'm thinking the thirties. I'm probably the thirty. I'm probably off. How many did you say for the 30? I said 15, but I think if we're going by the how long do you have until they until they check out? Yeah. Oh, yeah. I think it's going to be even more than 10. I'm going to say this is 6, and 30 is 8. I agree. All right, let's see if you guys kind of went through it. What do you guys think of the maximum learning attention span of a two-year-old would be? Now, these are generalizations. So I know some kids might be a little bit different, but in general, what do you think it is? 30 seconds. 30 seconds. 30 seconds. Oh, my God. 30 wow. seconds. Wow. It is actually two minutes. Oh, man. Oh. <laughs> I thought I was right. Two minutes for a two-year-old. Yeah, me too. <laughs> so if you could really, if you're teaching a two-year-old class, first of all, God bless you. You're my favorite person in the world. Second of all, you have two minutes of maximum drill that point into them. You do not have 15 minutes of maximum drilling effect. So that means your activities, when you want them to bring them in and bring the story together and bring it to life, you have two minutes to make your point and you got to move on to the next thing. So you can have some fluff around either side. You've got two minutes to impact and to really speak to them. And then have them get up, dance around, and uh, maybe do a game that has to do with the points. But yeah, I got two minutes of explaining the game and explaining how it has to do with the point. Two minutes. Yeah. Make your two minutes work, mm -hmm. worth it, and then move on. Five years old. Five years. Five, five minutes. Yes. Five minutes. Yes. You have five minutes with a kindergartner to make a story or a lesson or a point Impact, that's your maximum. Again, fluff around the sides, but that gives you a little bit of a grace grace to do a skit and to have them be in their maximum learning zone the whole time that the skit is going on. So you do a 10-minute skit, you've lost them. And they might be watching, but the actual maximum learning, thinking, comprehending, making connections, you've got about five minutes. Eight years. Ten. I'm going to guess eight. <laughs> Can I guess eight? Ten? Ten? Fifteen. Fifteen? Three? It's eight. It's eight. I knew it. It's eight. Eight minutes. So it starts going up. You guys kind of know that. That's uh, early elementary. You can get them for about eight minutes or so. Um, that's why it's great when you're doing small groups and stuff that your discussion not be more than like eight minutes and then do an activity together. That's a few minutes and then do this because maximum learning time span is only eight minutes. And if you're like me and I have six years old all the way through 11, you know, um, you have to think of the younger ones because the older ones can kind of go with the flow. All right. Who wants to try 10 then? 10. 12. It's 10. 10 minutes. So it's kind of incremental. It, forget that word. I can't say it today. It's slowly going up. All right, here we go. Um, 14. 14. 14. 30. 30. 14. It is 14. It stops at 14 minutes. So you in this room have officially stopped listening to me. <laughs> You're, well, actually, if you notice, I've broken you up and let you have breaks to come back for your max, maximum learning span of time. You're welcome. All right. <laughs> okay, keep the lesson to one main point then. I don't know why sometimes we try to connect two or three main points, especially with a two-year-old. You got three points. Go for it. You got two minutes for three points. Have fun. Ten-year-old, you got ten minutes. That, that involves um, every skit, game, craft, object lesson, etc. are geared to um, add another strand of connection between the one major truth you're teaching and the child. Using all of those mediums, skits, games, craft, object lessons, worship, what else do you guys do? Come on, what else do you guys do? Small group. Small group, what else? Actual lesson. Craft. Bible story. The Bible story. Media. 
Media. Media is a great one. You have to make sure that you're kind of going back to one central truth. You can have kind of three points underneath that, especially with older kids. But what I'm saying is it all goes back to one thing. I can have faith in God because he's faithful to me. That's their takeaway. So everything that you do, um, I've gotten away from doing a lot of, um, sometimes it's fun just to do the minute to win it games, and every once in a while I'll bring those out because my kids love them. But man, after that point, everything that I do is all pointing back to that main point. I can be faithful to God because he's faithful to me. I'm going through a small group. I can, I, I can be faithful to God because he's faithful to me. The Bible story, the skit, the object lesson. Maybe we're playing a game later or a discussion. Whatever it is, you need to roll it back into the one main point. It can get too messy, and the kids can kind of, it's hard for them to, you know, try to track with us and follow with us if we're not having one main point that we're going through. And honestly, I think that people who are speaking to adults also kind of need to keep it to one generic type of um, overarching umbrella kind of a thing. So it makes it a lot easier and a lot easier for you guys to prepare your lessons with. I'll tell you that much. And so, um, let's see. Try taking the one major point coming up with many ways to teach it in various ways. Creativity does not mean um, that you have to come up with the most amazing lesson in the world. Second point underneath that. Creative means... Connecting the learners with the lesson in an unexpected and memorable way. I'll say that again. Creativity means connecting the learners with the lesson in an unexpected and memorable way. Sometimes we just we put too much pressure on ourselves. Man, have you ever seen like uh, Brent Colby with Billy the Goat? <laughs> she laughs. I can't do Billy the Goat. And I'm at a church that he was once at. And I came in and they're like, you don't have a puppet? How are you going to teach kids? <laughs> well, I'll show you. <laughs> I, I'm sorry, that's not my talent. That's not what I'm gifted at. But that's not what creativity is calling you to do. Creativity is not calling you to look at new life and to look at what they do here and to say, i got to copy that. I'm not creative enough. It means using the four learning styles thinking through what you're doing and adding little elements to those things that will help to enhance the learning, understand the, the, the maximum learning attention span, moving through things, having one main point, that's going to make just as much of an impact if you use your giftings, your experience, and your talents in your lesson. So you don't have to feel like, I'm not as exuberant as somebody else. Oh my goodness, I had a guy in children's ministry who was like um, the teacher from Ferris Bueller's Day Off. Oh and the God. kids laughed so hard because he'd be like, and today we're talking about... And just like the little mannerisms that they had, he used his giftings. He would do ridiculously weird things, and the kids connected with it. And I was like, more power to you. Because he made sure he wasn't super exuberant, but he made sure his lesson was completely riddled with the four learning styles. No, he didn't stay on something for too long. And he moved through. He didn't have to be loud. I have teachers that are very quiet, and they're conservative and loving and caring and gentle. But they make the kids hold things and they bring them up to do activities and I have some people that are louder than me hard to believe but it's true and they're loud and they're exuberant and that's their giftings so sometimes we get a wrong image of creativity in our head and say well my lesson is not creative because she's so much more creative great she got up there and jumped up and down she had a 20 percent retention hmm of what she taught. So the kids are going to go home and say, it was so awesome and so exciting what you learned. She jumped up and down. It was so great. <laughs> and you sat down in your small group and instead of just asking them the questions, you passed out a penny for them to hold in their hands. And they got to remember that they were worth something to God. And they got to take it home. And when they came home, they opened up their hand and they showed their parents that penny. And they were able to tell their parents exactly what they learned about that day, how they are one well, one time they did it at Fusion, and I remember it. They gave us one penny, and they said that we were one sent by God. Hmm. I still remember it to this day, that I'm special because I am one sent by God to do what he has me to do. Mm -hmm. That didn't take some loud, creative person. That took someone who took the time to break down the lesson and go, I need something tactile. I'm missing something. 
I'm missing the, them going home and teaching it to their parents or their friends. What can I do that they can keep with them or something that would remind them so that they could verbally say what they have learned and teach someone else? Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. So don't get bogged down. Please don't get bogged down by the feeling of, oh my goodness, I have to spend 400 hours on the internet trying to find the best object lesson in the world. That's all great, but you can do it no matter your personality. It just takes planning and it takes time thinking through what you actually um, are going to do. So what are, are different ways or activities you can engage the four types of learners that elevate your point? So we kind of talked about it. skits. Media. Um, some through uh, having the kids act out the Bible story, doing a game show. Um, what are some other things that you guys do? Small groups, a huge one. It's that discussion piece, um, having them teach one another. There are so many ways that you can get the point across. For the kinesthetic learner, a game, right? So, like, you know, Moses leading the Israelites out from captivity in Egypt, so you're playing a game. We did this once, it was, I, it was the dumbest game, but the kids loved it. We had uh, Moses and Israelites and Aaron and stuff, and we had them on popsicle sticks, like we, uh, we printed them out from like a little preschool site, and like I had one of my leaders just like color it really fast, and I had a block of styrofoam on one end of the classroom and a block of styrofoam on the other end, and they practiced and they got in a relay and they had to go up, and of course there's like you know, 50 Israelites on this block of styrofoam. And they had to get all of them before the other team, um, you know, like across the Red Sea. And so then we it. put it like waves in the middle, and then they had to run into the front of the classroom. They had to grab it, and then they, there was a styrofoam piece in the back, and they had to plant it at the end of it. And the kids went home, and they were able to tell their parents and teach them, did you know that the Israelites crossed the sea and blah, blah, blah. Yeah, and they were able to tell it. But I used a game, and the kinesthetic learners were like, <laughs> you spoke my love language, you, my learning language. You spoke my learning language, and I loved it. So uh, there's so many ways to get your point across, so please make sure that you use them. All right, so here's kind of an example. I'm going to go through it so that you guys can actually um, kind of maybe see what the four learning styles might look like. So we're going to do this. I want you to all grab a rock. Can you pass some of these out? Thank you. Can you pass Thank them you. out? Can you pass Thank it you. in? Just take one and pass it on. Can you guys take one and pass one on behind you there? There you go. Make sure everybody has a rock. All right, everybody take your rock, put it in your hand, put your hands in your lap, just like this, awesome. So let's say on a Sunday I was talking about Luke 1940, he replied, if they kept quiet, the stones along the road would burst into cheer. Okay, this is so random, I'm not saying go home and teach this, this is just a <laughs> random exercise for us to walk through. So talking about our worship to God. And, and how it says, you know, if they kept quiet, the stones along the road would burst into cheers. <laughs> Worship God. And, you know. So, um, just by holding up a rock and telling you guys that, what learning style have I just accomplished? Visual. Kinesthetic. Oh, the visual. visual yeah. The visual learner. So here it is right here. I just passed a rock out. Everybody take the rock in their hand. I want you to feel that rock. I want you guys to look at that rock. Look at that rock and look at what this verse says. What learning style did I just accomplish? The tactile. Good job. Touching the rock themselves. When, um, and then the next one. How would you guys feel this rock in your hand? How would you guys feel if that rock just started cheering from your hand? Turn to your neighbor and tell them. Turn to your neighbor and tell them. Auditory. I would be like, what learning style did we just accomplish there? Auditory. Auditory, because you guys just discussed this rock. Let the let them take the rock home. 
So guys, I want you, if you have a pocket, put it in your pocket. If you don't have a pocket, put it underneath your chair. That's what I would say to children. <laughs> and I want you guys to take this home. And when mom and dad tells, asks you what you learned today, I want you to reach into your pocket, and I want you to pull out that rock, and I want you to tell them exactly what we learned today. What learning style are we accomplishing? Kinesthetic. Kinesthetic. What is the level, what percentage of retention are we talking about by that point in time? 90%. 90%. Was I most the, most the most creative person? That was, that was like something that I grabbed this week because I walked past a bunch of rocks on the ground and I decided to have you guys hold on to them. Okay, like, it wasn't the most thought through. It took me about three minutes to come up with that. Didn't have to be the most creative person, didn't have to have a skit, but I just accomplished 90% retention by those four steps that I took. And I could have done that whole thing in one minute. Two-year-old, I probably wouldn't give them a rock, okay? Mm -hmm. They'll eat it. <laughs> They'll eat it. They'll digest it. I might pass around a rock for them to hold on to, and then they might do a craft at the end that these rocks and stuff, and they get to take it home. And they get to tell their parents, their take-home sheet, what they did. So depending on the age, you guys have to be smart. <laughs> I know that you guys are all very intelligent, you know, and so if your children's ministry, if they go crazy all the time, don't give them rocks. We'll throw them at each other's heads, okay? My children's <laughs> ministry, I think they could accomplish it. We're almost to that point, and they could put it underneath their, their chair and pick it up when they leave. Um, so do you see how the four learning styles create like enough creativity to get that 90%, which is our goal, what we want to go after, so that the, when the kids go home, they just weren't entertained. They caught one nugget of truth about God, and isn't that why we exist? I don't know about you, but I exist for that one kid that goes, oh, wait, wait. So you've been telling me about Jesus, and wait, so Jesus died for me? Huh. That moment, oh, I could, I could cry. That's the moment that I live for. When they're connecting the things that I've talked about and I've taught to their own personal lives, that's true creativity. You just connected them in an unexpected way, an unpredictable way that they weren't expecting. You caught their hearts, their learning styles, the way that they think, their attention span. You just got them. That's true creativity. <coughs> So, um, just a few things before we move on. Um, there are some huge benefits to this, um, to being creative. You can get a more focused group. So, instead of standing in front of the kids for 20 minutes and just talking, you add some creative elements um, to the mix, and you're going to get a more focused group while you're talking to them. So, the two-year-old, if you let them touch things, you let them smell things, you let them, you know, worship and pretend worshiping and praising God and giving them symbols and, you know, stuff the shake and make music with. You're, you're, you're going to have way less discipline problems. You're still going to have some. That's just the way children's ministry is. But you're going to grab them and you're going to help them focus more. You're going to teach them a nugget of truth that sticks. Something that they can go home with and say, yes, this is what I learned. If they got everything else wrong, this is what I learned. The learning continues at home and they tell their parents about why they learned. I have parents that don't know Jesus of the kids that come you know, Sundays or Wednesdays or whatever. They don't know Jesus. Um, also, it encourages them to talk to their kids about God. I, I'm super shocked all the time about how many parents at home don't talk about God except for on Sundays with their kids. Yeah. And maybe not even then. Go to your class. How was it? Great, good. I send take-home sheets. Hopefully during the week, they've talked about it, getting the parents used to talking about God in hard situations, in great situations, praise reports, prayer requests as a family. So you're getting them to continue what they've learned at, at home. Less misbehaving for the most part. If you keep it rolling, you know where you're going with it, and the leaders, leaders become engaged and creative. So you start training your leaders and the people that you work with these same things. And you say, listen, you can do whatever you want. There's a hockey stick. I can, I can come up with five object lessons having to do with that. Or we're going to play a game involving it. And what you're doing is you're turn, turning on the creative juices and giving all of that over to some of your other leaders or people that you work with. And they're going to become more involved. They're going to see the reaction that the kids have. Parents are going to come up to them and say, oh, yeah, you're the one who taught my kid about the rock. That was all. They, couldn't talk. they just talked about it the whole week. Thanks. And you're like, oh. And your leader begins to have some, some stake in what you're, what's being brought to the table. So finding those people also who are creative and want to come up with things. You know there's that craft lady in your, your church. 
you can here's the thing you have to work ahead and know what lessons you're teaching ahead of time mm -hmm. why not give her a few months to come up with something that's really just going to like make those five and six year olds sing with a craft and have her come in special not to teach the class but to use her giftings and her experiences and her talents to to help further <sighs> along a point or we have guys that are real outdoorsy and they like to play games and why not have them you know, come in once a month and do a game and give them a point ahead of time and just let them go. Be creative and do something. Because like I said, not every lesson has to have the four learning styles. Do you get my point? But mm -hmm. throughout the whole entire day, you have need to hit with the same point all of those four learning styles. So, one last thing and then I'm going to let you guys try it because we only have a few minutes so you guys will just get a few minutes through it. Totally fine. Here's the thing. Extra info is the full back two pages. We're not going through this. Here's the main thing. There's like ways, uh, way kids learn best, lesson planning, why it's important, all that kind of stuff. Here's what I have to say. There's a resource list on the back. Um, honestly, once in a while, like I go on the internet and I just type in object lessons about faithfulness and I might pop up with some stuff. Um, I usually uh, take the idea and make it better. Um, I take ideas and I just constantly think about my kids, who they are, how they're going to react to their age, and I always tweak stuff, okay? So it's not cheating to go online and pull some stuff. But, but here's, here's the thing. Please lesson plan. So if, you are, if you're not the children's pastor and you're, you're helping in the class, I'm going to say what your children's pastor doesn't really probably say to your face. Um, if you get there on Sunday morning and you, that's the first time you've looked at your book, good luck. You failed. Please, I'm, I'm telling you this just out of the heart of a children's pastor, these kids are worth it, yeah. to look mm -hmm. through the lesson, mm -hmm. even if it's Monday morning. You're doing your devotions. Don't do your devotions with your lesson. They are separate. Do your devotions. Look at your lesson. Don't do anything with it. Just read through it. Because what's going to happen, pray that the Holy Spirit speaks to you. During that week, you're going to come up with creative ideas. Mm -hmm. You're going to be in a restaurant and see a fork and go, that just gave me an idea for a game. It's ridiculous, and it's weird, and it's awkward when you're out with people, and you're like, Ooh! And like what? And you're like, no, I just figured out my whole Sunday. Not a big deal. And it happened on Tuesday. <laughs> but, you know, the Holy Spirit can't speak to you if you don't look at it until Sunday morning. Amen. Mm -hmm. So if you are the children's pastor and you wait till Sunday night because that is the best time, crunch time, please just look at it a month in advance, a few weeks in advance. I am sorry, but to look at it Saturday night, I can come up with so many ideas on Monday that I don't have time to do by the time or look at it a month in advance so I can go and find a cheap price on something like little fake coins that I want to hand out to the kids. I can't do that on Friday afternoon. I mean, I will spend my whole day running to every dollar store to find stupid gold coins that Oriental Trading has for $2 for 2,000 of them, you know? And so lesson planning, please read through this. Make sure on Sundays, your room, your area, everything is prepped before the first child walks in. Mm -hmm. You want that sense of it starts now from the time that they roll in. Mm -hmm. Keep them moving because if you've lost them before you started, you're never going to get them back. So just a few little nuggets of wisdom. I've been doing this since I was 14 years old. Learned it real fast. I have a mom who's a children's pastor. She helped me right along. And at 14, 15, I could maintain a group of five-year-olds, 25 five-year-olds in this building. I grew up at this church. 25 five-year-olds at one time. And I kept pushing the level of creativity and how they could learn. It was a fun time for me. Now, I wish I could go back, back to that where it was like one class, one Sunday. But what I learned is I had to look at the lesson way in advance mm -hmm. in order to do kind of the most creative and have time to process it. So here is what we're going to do. We have only five minutes remaining, maybe a little bit. Yeah, we have five minutes. So here's what we're going to do. Um, group lesson. You guys each are going to get into a group. You're going to have one main lesson point and I think I have them in here. <coughs> Let me make sure. Well, they're in the mess of this place somewhere. I had some points for you guys on there. Um, so choose a really simple point. God is, God is faithful. God is love. Something really simple that you can work with and that group that you've been sharing with and stuff. I want you guys to come up with four different ways to teach that point. 
God is love, God is faithful, uh, whatever simple point, think of something you've taught recently. And as a group, maybe come up with four different things that you can do, four different activities or one activity that has the four learning styles in it. Your goal is to have one activity that connects with at least one learning type. It could have multiple, like I did with the rock, it had multiple things. And so uh, you're going to just talk amongst yourselves and see if you guys, for the next five minutes, just in five minutes, can come up with a simple plan for one simple point, nugget of truth, that you want to teach a kid. Do you guys understand? So just within your group, you need to connect the four learning styles. That could be four activities that you come up with or one activity or two activities, but it uses multiple of those. So you guys have five minutes. Go. Go.